Welcome to the Christian Church on this first day of the week, September the 13th, 2015. Thank God for the opportunity to preach the gospel once again. Thank God for his goodness and grace and how he brings us through no matter how challenging each and every day has been. God has been faithful to us to bring us through each and every challenge. Last week, we came from Jeremiah chapter 6. I told you this would be a little short two-part series dealing and how and you're looking and seeing how the problems that were going on in the days of Jeremiah are still connected to today and how we are seeing people who know the truth turn their back on the truth. And the Bible says God calls them reprobate silver because the Lord has rejected them. If we're not following and obeying God, do you understand that there is a judgment comes? First, God tries to correct you because he loves you enough to tell you the truth about yourself. But if you do not respond to that truth, then God will cut you off and you end up living according to your ways and you will receive the punishment when you die. Do you understand? As you await the day of judgment, which will be the final consequences of your action, which have eternal consequences. We must be serious about our walk with God, our relationship with God, how we carry ourselves before God, and how we treat others. And we must make sure that we're obeying his word, because if we are not, God is not going to sit it and look at that and wink at that and smile. For he is going to deal with us according as our works deserve. We're going to go to Jeremiah chapter 7 and continue to see what God was dealing with in the days of Jeremiah as we celebrate the fact that Jesus Christ was born. And we believe that Jesus Christ was born during this time of the year, according to as the scriptures tell us. And so we see how people have corrupted even the birth of Christ, just as they corrupted the death of Christ, come up with their own pagan holidays and use customs that the Bible calls abominable in trying to celebrate something that is supposed to be holy and sacred, such as the birth of our Lord and Savior. When you see the corruption going and the correlations between the corruption that was going on and the, the Old Testament with the children of Israel and how we see corruption still going on with the church of the Lord Jesus Christ today because there are people who have crept in that have changed the truth of God into a lie and because they have done so you see all kinds of, of confusion and all kinds of, of trouble that has come and God is going to speak to Jeremiah once again in Jeremiah chapter 7 Beginning at verse 1. Father, in the name of Jesus, may you help me to preach your gospel. And may you help me to stay focused on the subject and the task and the urgency of what is at hand. Lord, help me to concentrate and minister in a way that people can understand and go to you and seek you for the wisdom and the understanding and the guidance of your holy word in which I am going to preach here with your grace and with your mercy and I pray your spirit will help me to see how your word pertains to me and how I need to live my life according to the truth of your holy word may I minister with love and with grace as you have given me in Jesus name amen, amen. Jeremiah chapter number 7 beginning at verse 1 it says the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, as you see, this word came to Jeremiah from the Lord. This is not something that Jeremiah made up on his own. This is something that came definitely and directly from the Holy Spirit of God. You understand? Mm -hmm. For the Spirit and the Son and the Father, those three are one. So this is the word that is coming from the Lord. Verse 2. Stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim there the word and say, Hear 
the word of the Lord, all ye of Judah, that enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. God is giving specific commands. He's giving these commands to the people who are coming to worship the Lord. Make no distinction. You understand? Make no confusion about who God's talking to. He's talking to his people who should know right from wrong. And he's saying that if we who know right from wrong don't get it right, then we become a stumbling block to those who don't know the truth, who want to know the truth. That's why it's very important that we get our house in order because people are watching us. Our wives, our husbands, our children, our community, our world is watching us. And if we want the world to get it right, it starts in our homes. You understand? Yeah. And God is speaking to those who come to hear the word of God. Those that come to worship God. And he's putting the burden and the responsibility of obedience on us. That others may see and want to obey God as well. Okay. Verse 3. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, amend your ways and your doings. And I will cause you to dwell in this place. He starts off by telling them to amend their ways. To amend something means to do over. You understand? It means to correct. Correct your ways. Repent. Turn from your sins. God is saying he'll be with you if you do so. If you do not do so, you need to understand that God is against you because you are against him. You understand? God will fight against those who fight against him. And guess what? You can't beat God. Nope. Verse 4. Trust ye not in the words, I know in lying words, saying the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. For if ye thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, if ye thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, if ye oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place, neither walk after other gods to your hurt, Verse 7, then will I cause you to dwell in this place in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. You understand what God is telling them? Don't you think because you come to church that you're all right? In this particular instance, he's talking about the temple of the Lord, which is the place they went to worship. But now God says he wants true worshipers that worship in spirit and in truth. And he's telling you to not trust in lying words. Don't trust in the words of people telling you, well, you went to church this Sunday, so you must be all right. This is not a place where you come and sit to take up space or to catch an, af you know, an, an afternoon nap. This is the place where we hear the word of truth and we respond. And it starts by correcting ourselves. We can't fix other people until we let God fix us. Then we can see clearly to help our brother or our sister or our wife or our husband. You understand? Until we get it right with ourselves, there's no need in us blaming other folks for our troubles. We must understand that God wants you to do better. God wants you to get better. And it starts by getting better on the inside. It's on the inside out. Happiness is not something that you can conjure up with your mind. Joy is what you're really looking for. And only the Holy Ghost can give you joy. And he says, if you don't walk after other gods. See, all these materialistic things... Money, sex, drugs, all of these things, prestige, power, these are other gods that will lead you to hell. Jesus said that we are the worship the Lord, our God, 
and serve him only. That is the first and greatest commandment, you understand? Is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. God said, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Do you understand that those things that you think you need to make your life better can become your gods? If you're not careful, you will put them ahead of the living God. Ooh, the Bible says, God, God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. The Bible says the Lord will provide. That's why we call him Jehovah Jireh, because he provided just like he provided the ram for Abraham in the bush. Do you understand God will provide? all of your needs but you have to be humble and you have to be willing to surrender your life before him as long as we have too much pride and stubbornness and rebellion in our hearts we will lose out on what God has for us and in the end is eternal destruction to those who do not come to the understanding and knowledge of the truth of the word Verse 8, Behold, ye trust in lying words that cannot profit, and do you no good listening to a liar. Will ye steal, murder, and commit adultery, and swear falsely, and burn incense unto Baal, and walk after other gods whom ye know not? And see, people don't understand. Burning incense to Baal is more than just what they did in the Old Testament. When we partake in the celebration of these pagan holidays like Christmas, mm -hmm. which have nothing to do with Christ, and when you look into what Christmas is all about, I talked about it last year. I have sermons out talking about what Christmas represents, how many babies were killed on the altars and sacrificed under Baal. And we have the nerve to try to celebrate these things and say they're honoring to Jesus. They are not honoring to God. God will deal with us one day if we do not turn from our wicked ways. That's why I have purposed to remove Christmas from my home and to celebrate the birth of Christ, not the fact that Jesus was crucified. What is there to celebrate about that? That was the most horrible thing that could ever happen is an innocent God the Son go to Calvary for us and yet he did it for us in love. We appreciate what Jesus did for us. We do not celebrate the fact that he was he was pierced in his side, that he was planted with a crown of thorns on his head, that he had nails driven through his feet and his hands. You understand how painful that was for Jesus and people are celebrating the fact that he was killed and crucified. Thank God he rose from the dead. Thank God he loved us so much he gave his life. But there is nothing pretty about it. And it has nothing to do with the Christ mass of the Roman Catholics, which is really Saturnalia, which was a feast in which all types of evil and idolatry took place. All types of orgies and all types of sacrifices to false gods baking cakes unto the queen of heaven and all of those things that went on and people want to have the nerve they want to put the name Christ on it and call it Christmas this ain't about nobody's Christmas this is about celebrating the fact that Jesus was born a savior was born and he was born during this season not during the winter season and we don't put our birthdays three months behind so why are we trying to do that with Christ unless we're not celebrating Christ's birthday at all which is what they're not doing that's why when I ask people to celebrate with me the fact that Christ was born I don't get very many takers why because people are steeped in idolatry and in their own traditions and the churches are making money off of it at the expense of the people here we have God dealing with Jeremiah concerning the children of Israel that had turned to worship these false gods. The Bible says, 
that they walk after other gods that they know not. And verse 10, and come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, we are delivered to do all these abominations. See what they're doing? They're going to, to the place of worship with all this idolatry that they've committed and had the nerve to say they've been delivered. They have deceived themselves. And God is letting them know he's not pleased. In this house, which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes. Behold, even I have seen it, saith the Lord. But go ye now unto my place, which was in Shiloh, where I set my name in the first, and see what I did to it for the wickedness of my people Israel. And now, because you have done all these works, saith the Lord, and I spake unto you, rising up early and speaking, but ye heard not, and I called you, but ye answered not, Therefore will I do unto this house, which is called by my name, wherein ye trust, and unto the place which I give, I gave to you and to your fathers, as I have done to Shiloh. God is talking about how he's going to destroy these places that have become dens of robbers. We talked about God's house. Jesus said, my father's house should be called a house of prayer, but you made it a den of thieves. This is just picking up from there. In the midst of what I'm talking about here, it goes right back to God telling Jeremiah about the den of, of robbers, just like he told Jer Isaiah, and just like Jesus told the Pharisees. You understand, when God's house comes corrupt, God will judge his house because the Bible says that judgment must first begin at the house of God and God is not playing God will judge you if you keep playing church stop playing church for your own sake because when God judges you not I or anybody else will be able to help you when the wrath of God falls on you no human being on this planet can help you to avoid that get it right now get it right now repent turn to God and watch God turn your situation around verse 15 he says and I will cast you out of my sight as I have cast out all your brethren even the whole seed of Ephraim therefore pray not thou for this people neither lift up cry nor prayer for them neither make an accession to me for I will not hear thee God is not playing here it's not playing there comes a time when the saints of God won't even be able to pray for you. If you keep playing with fire, you're going to get burned and you're going to get burned up. And you're not going to die. You're going to continue to burn forever. I don't want you to have to feel that type of a feeling because at that point, it's too late for anyone to help you. Receive the help and the advice while you have the opportunity. Don't keep playing with God. Because God is going to call your bluff one day. You understand? We got to get this thing right with God. And we got to be serious. Seest thou not what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? The children gather wood and the fathers kindle the fire. And the women need their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven. This is Samaritus. And to pour out drink offerings under other gods that they may provoke me to anger. 
Do they provoke me to anger, saith the Lord? Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own? Therefore thus saith the Lord, God. He says, Behold, mine anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place, upon men, and upon and upon beast, and upon the tree of the field and upon the fruit of the ground and it shall burn and shall not be quenched as a fire that you're never going to be put out never be able to put out thus saith the Lord of hosts the God of Israel put your burnt offerings unto your sacrifices and eat flesh for I spake not unto your fathers nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings and sacrifices but this thing commanded I them saying obey my voice and I will be your God and ye shall be my people and walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you that it may be well with you or it will may be well unto you but they hearken not, nor incline their ear, but walk in the counsels and in the imagination of their evil heart. And went backward and not forward. They backslid. You understand? God said, turn unto me. Stop doing the evil that you're doing and I'll fix the situation. And they would not turn. They backslid instead of going forward. They went backward. If all you've got in the past is guilt and shame, why you keep going back there? What you think going to happen? You ain't going to have no peace or joy if you keep living in the past. You had better start moving forward and you had better start making better decisions because I assure you and promise you that if you do not, when you stand before God, you will be as sorry as sorry can be, but it will be too late. We need to take heed to these serious messages because not a day should be taken for granted. And if you're not ready to meet the Lord, you better get ready because ready or not, that day is coming. Either sooner or later, you're going to have to give an account. I pray that you make it right before it's too late because God is no one to be played with. Verse 25, since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt unto this day, I have even sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, daily rising up early and sending them. God has always had prophets that he woke up out of their sleep to intercede for the people or to get a word to give to the people of warning or encouragement. Yet they hearken not unto me, nor incline their ear, but harden their neck. They did worse than their fathers. Therefore thus, therefore thou shalt speak all these words unto them, but they will not hearken to thee. Thou shalt also call unto them, but they will not answer thee. But thou shalt say unto them, This is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God. nor receiveth correction. There we go. Truth is perished and is cut off from their mouth. Cut off thine hair, O Jerusalem, and cast it away. And take up a lamentation on high places, for the Lord have rejected and forsaken the generation of his wrath. For the children of Judah have done evil in my sight, saith the Lord. They have set their abominations in the house, which is called by my name to pollute it. They have built the high places of Tophet, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I commanded them not. 
neither came it in to my heart. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be called Tophet, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. For they shall bury in Tophet, till there be no place. And the carcasses of this people shall be meat for the fowls of the heavens and for the beasts of the earth, and none shall fray them away. Then will I cause to cease from the cities of Judah and from the streets of Jerusalem the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride for the land shall be desolate. God's going to wipe it out. God's going to do that in the great tribulation. He's going to wipe out all of those places that were called by his name that were corrupted. You see abortion. That's the same thing as what was going on in Tophet. They were burning their sons and their daughters. Now they're slaughtering them innocently in the womb these kids are being innocent kids are being slaughtered and the people are going to have blood on their hands for worshiping and celebrating these holidays that depict all of the wicked abominable practices they must answer they must turn from that they must turn to the Lord in order that they may be saved and healed and delivered but God said many will not listen, just like many don't listen when I talk about it. I, I know people who are pastors that, are, that become very stubborn when you try to tell them about what Christmas stands for. They don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. Well, the time will come when they will wish they had listened. God is raising up people. He raised up Jeremiah and Isaiah. He's raising up people in this day. People like myself who want to see people obey the truth, not doing it for money or profit or for prestige or any of those things, doing it because I love God, teaching the word of God because I love him and I want to know his word and I want right interpretation of his word so that I may not steer people wrong and have blood on my hands. Amen. Amen. So I tell you the truth of the gospel. I preach these from the Old and New Testament because there's much we can learn from the Old Testament. We are in the New Covenant. We are saved by the grace of Jesus and not by the works of the law. That does not give us permission to just live any kind of way we want to live. We must obey the truth of the word. We must obey the scriptures and understand that it is by Jesus that we are saved. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can be pleasing to God. When we turn from our evil ways and let his blood let the blood of his son cleanse us, we no no longer need burnt animal sacrifices and different things. God wants us to amend our ways. He wants us to turn to him, and he will fix our situation, and it will be to our benefit to turn to God and not worry about the enemies and people who will stand against you because God said in his word that if God be for you, who can be against you? Those people who talk about you and persecute you for doing what's right, they will have their day when they will give an account because God says whatsoever. He says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You will not get right until you do right. And if you do right, then the blessings of God, the approval of God, all of those things, the love of God will be shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. You will be pleasing to the Heavenly Father. And you will not have to worry about anything because God is going to take care of your needs. But if you do not, the flip side of God's love and mercy is God's judgment and his wrath. Don't you end up on the side of wrath and judgment. May you end up on the side of love and mercy. And it comes through learning God's word and obeying his word. Don't matter if your situation looks complicated. God can sort it out. Give him a chance. Turn from your sins. Turn to God and you will not be 
thrown away as reprobate silver. You understand? Trust God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the opportunity you've given me to once again preach your holy word with passion, with love, and with seriousness. Thank you, Lord, for empowering me to speak beyond what my physical capabilities or mental abilities may entail. Thank you, God, for giving me the ability to minister the truth of your word with the power of the Holy Ghost in hopes that those who hear the word of God begin to make the necessary changes that they may enter into the joy of the Lord one day and not have to fall into the fires of hell for disobeying the truth of the word. I pray your spirit will help us, convict us, correct us, instruct us, encourage us, and guide us, and teach us in the way of truth and in the way of righteousness in Jesus' name. And I pray for your mercy and grace and your protection to be with us as we travel and as we go about our daily activities. May we trust you and know, Lord God, that you're greater than the football games or anything else that's taking place in this world. There is none or nothing or no activity or no sport greater than the living God. May there be no other gods before us. May we give our allegiance and our love to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You are dismissed. Go in His grace. Praise the Lord.